I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about what happens when you break no contact. This is a really important discussion today, so make sure you guys stick around to the end and listen to all the points that we're gonna discuss. Right. Because many of you are thinking about breaking no contact, probably on a weekly basis, if not more if not so. not a daily basis, mm -hmm. yeah. right. And we understand that, you know, everything inside of you is telling you, I really want to fix this. I really want to connect with them. And, you know, one of the frustrating things for me is a lot of times when I do a coaching and I suggest going no contact and people getting opposite advice. Right. From, yeah, from other sources. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I was just showing Coach Victoria an email today from somebody that did coaching with me and they followed a hypnotherapist's advice and she wound up saying to him, essentially, if you contact me again, I'm gonna get the police involved yeah. and I'm using this as record. So, wow. yeah. And I told him, don't reach out, let her come to you. The situation is really volatile right now. Yeah. So obviously every situation is so unique and different. And so we're giving you a general idea to mm -hmm. consider. And we discuss these things specifically when we're coaching you, but just so you have an idea of what can happen when you reach out and break no contact, these are some of the things that we see, okay? So how bad can it get? It can get pretty bad. It can get yeah, pretty it can bad. It can get pretty bad. Believe it or not, uh, like we just gave the example, um, that guy had you know, now been threatened with legal involvement. Mm -hmm. And so that's horrible and obviously gonna scare the hell out of him and make him feel a million times worse about the situation, right. which who can blame him. And sometimes, you know, we have the fantasy of reaching out and that the partner will be, the ex-partner will be thrilled to hear from us. But sometimes it feels more like an intrusion than a, than a reach out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're gonna look, you gotta think, consider different factors like, uh, how long ago was the breakup? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how many times have you reached out since they wanted to break up with yeah. you? Why did they end the relationship? Obviously, mm -hmm. all of those factors are really important. Right, and what would happen when you break no contact also depends on how you break no contact and what is said and the exact context of that. Uh, so we're gonna go into depth with that today. And regardless, breaking no contact will always interrupt their grieving process. So I know Margaret has talked in the past about how breaking no contact can break that grieving process. And when someone breaks up with you, no matter how angry they sound, um, there's no, no even thought that they don't think about you. If they've spent time with you, if they've spent intimate time with you, if they've considered you a couple, there's no way that they can avoid a grief process when mm -hmm. they break up with you. Um, and what you don't want to do is reach out and interrupt that grief process. And if you do, you interrupt the person's separation anxiety, which is built into every human being on earth. Mm -hmm. And what you end up doing is stopping your partner from your ex-partner from missing you, okay? If they hear from you, they're going to feel better. Their anxiety is going to be better, um, and that really isn't what you want. You want them to sit with the anxiety and the sadness of missing you. Mm -hmm. That's a huge point. Essentially, you know, if you are reaching out to them, how are they going to miss you? There's they they're not going to miss you because you yes. keep reaching out, mm -hmm. but you're also more importantly to me, taking away that fear that they 
will lose you, that there's a consequence right. for their decision because they ultimately ended this relationship. Yeah. So they need to feel the consequence of that. That's right. it, exactly. You, sometimes you have to be tough in this situation. Yeah, you and, you know, they need to see that you're not going to keep reaching out to them and they need to not necessarily know that. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to reach out and say, hey, I'm not going to yeah. reach out to you anymore. I'd rather them wonder every day, will I hear from them? That's will right. I not hear from them? But if you keep reaching out and breaking no contact, reaching out to them, they're going to stop the grieving. They're not going to get anxious. They're not going to feel that loss. And they're just going to think they're still interested. Right. And I can come back anytime I want. Yeah. And that's, exactly. you don't, I know your instinct is to make your ex-partner feel better. Mm -hmm. But this is a case where you really don't want to. Yeah. And it makes it more difficult to gauge their interest, too. If they're the ones reaching out to you, then you know that their anxiety has gotten to that point to be able to reach out to you. And you know that their heart is at least open to the idea of reconnecting with you to some level. Mm -hmm. So if they reach out first, then that's always going to be in your benefit. Absolutely. That's a big point. Mm -hmm. And not only that, um, you know, if you reach out, it could be at the worst time possible. Exactly. You don't know. But mm -hmm. if they reach out, it gives you some assurance that mm -hmm. they're wanting to contact mm -hmm. for some level, for some reason, whatever it is. You know, and a lot of times when there's a breakup, that person starts dating somebody right away. Right they're away. talking to somebody new and, mm -hmm. you know... If they're more interested in some other person, which I think happens a lot of times, mm -hmm. it's, I think, just normal part of breaking up, um, and they have that assurance that you're still there, it makes it easier for them to be more natural in the new relationship. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, if I mess up with this new person... I can go back to I my ex. I can always go back mm -hmm. to my ex. So it's kind of like you let them know that you're a safety net and they're going to act more natural. Whereas if they think they only have this new person, their, you know, attachment issues are more likely to come out, I think, mm -hmm. in the new relationship. Absolutely. And then cause mistakes. Right. right. And breaking no contact sends the message to them that you need them, that you need them to survive and you need them to be emotionally okay. That's putting them in the position of power uh -huh. and you in the position of weakness and the position of depending on them. Mm -hmm. So you really want to exude this confidence and this ability to be your own person separate from them for them to be able to think about a new relationship with you. And when you're able to find yourself again and become your own individual once again after that relationship, that's going to increase their curiosity. Now there's things about you that they don't know, that they haven't discovered yet. Things that are new, things that maybe you haven't discovered yet about yourself. So it's all part of that journey. Absolutely. And we don't want them to feel like they can end your relationship. Mm -hmm crush you, leave you devastated, and then they can get you back so quickly. Right, right. with a phone call. Yeah, yeah, that you're eager and jumping back into it mm -hmm. because that's going to decrease their value in their eyes. Like, I know what I can do, and they're going to tolerate it. Mm -hmm. And know it, you have to display your own value in a relationship and your self-worth. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a girl today that the guy had broken up with her, and she kept chasing him, chasing him, chasing him. And, you know, she's cooking him big elaborate dinners mm -hmm. and, you know, oh, inviting him over for Thanksgiving and investing all this time. And he's doing so little mm -hmm. to make it work. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, he had even cheated on her mm -hmm. wow. and left her for another girl. So I'm like, you can't Nothing chase you this do. guy. Nothing you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's got to he got make a real effort to try and repair it with you. And he has to make a decision. Yeah. And he unless, unless he really invests in her again, right. she's just going to tolerate being mistreated. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely show people how you want to be treated by setting your boundaries there. And by setting those boundaries, people will actually respect you more. Yes, they will. So you also want to consider their attachment style. Especially if your ex has more of an avoidant attachment style, they might see any type of reach out as an intrusion. And Margaret, you touched on this earlier. Would you talk more about how the avoidant might see Yes, it? Um, and I say to people very frequently, your partner is avoidant, and you have to remember that. Mm -hmm. If you continue to reach out to them, it does not feel 
like a reach out. It feels like you're trying to control or smother them, mm. and that's their biggest fear. Yeah. Okay? So an anxious person is totally different, but reaching out and chasing and avoidant is absolutely guaranteed to end the relationship. Yep. And you're really likely <clears throat> to make somebody angry. Absolutely. Especially yeah. if yep. you have been repeatedly reaching out mm -hmm. and they're not replying to you and you're just crossing the line where they're just getting upset, either contacting their friends or family or social media, mm -hmm. it's going to make them upset. Oh, absolutely. Contacting any third parties kind of comes mm -hmm. back to bite you. Right. And you don't want to get the police involved. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> because once it gets to that level, then it's going to be very hard for them to trust you again and for them to feel safe with you. And that's the huge thing about relationships is that safety and that connection. You also have to think about how you're respecting their boundaries when you break no contact. So if they've asked for space or shown you that they need that space, yeah. by reaching out to them, you're breaking that boundary and breaking uh, what they have decided for themselves. Right. So just be mindful of that. And, and the other thing is you always have to be aware that anybody has a choice to walk out of a relationship at any time mm -hmm. if they choose to do that. And you have that option as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big point. And also consider what happens to you when you break no contact. Is it going to cause you to obsess more? You might think, okay, if I reach out, this is going to soothe my anxiety. And it might momentarily. But then you have to think, what's going to happen after that? Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you might be obsessing, are they going to reply? Uh, oh, did I make a mistake? So consider your own mental health and your own mental sanity before you reach out. The biggest risk is you're going to feel rejected all over mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. And the uncertainty, especially if they don't reply right away, is really going to make you feel worse about it. Yeah. Uh, so frustrating for me, Margaret, sometimes when I see somebody do a coaching with me and like they're like, yeah, I reached out to my ex last night. I'm like... Why? Did you want me to put out this fire today? You thought you were going to take that big risk? Like literally the day before a call. Don't reach out right. the day before you have a call scheduled with me. Yeah. Let me discuss it with you. Because mm -hmm. it seems like they want me to put out some fire well, all Well, then they want to tell you exactly what they did and how it worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're making yourself vulnerable right, by reaching out and you're putting yourself out there to somebody who is essentially saying they're wanting to end that relationship and you know they've made that decision they've thought it through at least at some point it, unless it was like in a fight right. and mm -hmm. it was just like you impulsive. know impulsive but at, they've likely been thinking about it for some time mm -hmm. so you got to love yourself and respect yourself enough to say okay I love this person but I need to let them sit with this decision and I need to figure out how I can grow, look at this relationship objectively, mistakes that I've made, work through your own attachment issues and get to a good place. Mm -hmm. And that's either gonna help you to reattract this person again or with your new relationships, they'll have much healthier relationships. Exactly. Absolutely, you can't lose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, Frustrating for me when people's motivation level is only dependent upon what they think their chances are with an ex, mm -hmm. right? They think their chances are good, they're motivated. They ch think their chances are low, they give up. Right. Let me tell you something. Time and time again I see, just because they may not want to talk to you now or their interest level is low in you now, it doesn't matter or mean it's going to stay that way. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you don't really do the work in that time, when they do reach out, maybe it's a year later, maybe it's nine months later, maybe it's six months later, who knows, you're not going to be ready. And that's going to be the worst feeling mm -hmm. because I get a lot of emails from people that admit, I stopped doing the work, my ex came back, we're in another breakup. You know, and in this world of sort of instant everything, it's hard to remember that emotional matters are a process and there's no way to hurry it. Mm -hmm. An emotional process takes as long as it takes and there's nothing we can do. And you have to remember that they are grieving as well. So there's a process going on on both sides. You need to let it happen. Absolutely. Okay. I think that's pretty much all we wanted to say in this video. Mm -hmm. 
So if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful to you, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. And of course, Coach Vicky will be, Vicky will be here training with us. I'll be here. Uh, but that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk to you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, Click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.